come up once a year, once, you know, less than that, but knowledge, knowledge is powerful. Tournaments have a way of putting you in situations that just don't happen until they happen at the most critical moment. Mm -hmm. And it helps to have just those tiny little situational awareness ideas in the back of your head going, what do I do, what do I do? All right, got to make it count. All right, so now up next, we're going to have Zero versus Grant. Yep. Zero rocking some, some fancy shades today. Definitely the nicest sunglasses I've seen here right? today. Maybe the only pair, but still. When you can brand off your own sunglasses, you're stepping up the game. I want to know how he sees through that, though. I want to put those on. I cannot imagine <laughs> that you don't see. It's probably dim, but you have to see something, right? Sure. And now, going back to another extremely classic Guilty Gear match, Soul vs. Slayer. This is basically the old-fashioned knockdown drag-out fight. It's too careful if you like to hit really hard. All right, Grant uh, inducing the burst there, and a big risk there with the Grand Viper, not going to pay off. Oh, nice combo! Yeah, Grant going for the fancy combos off that punish. He's okay, going to get Grant, max damage. Very, very nice. I see you, Grant. Smoke out there. Zero. But Whoa. Wow. Two K hitting back back hitbox and crouching kick, but gets thrown for his trouble. We saw that earlier with um, our, the first match with uh, Trippin' Hobbit, where he did DP right as uh, right as right as the Slayer dashed through and hit him backwards. You see that a lot with Slayer because he's got that dash that goes through you. Yeah. Slayer's forward dash does have invulnerability on it, not nearly to the extent that his back dash does. So you can sometimes catch him with very active moves when he tries to dash through you like that. Zero about to get burst back. Yeah, there it is. And Grant was so ready, he didn't even try to combo there. He just went for the reset, hoping that he would burst. Sure enough, he did. And now Zero is in a lot of trouble. Can't really afford to get knocked down anymore. Very nice jump out there by Grant. Getting out of the pressure with his gun play. That was how Zero's got back in the corner. Yeah, forward dash RC, that should be it. Might be enough here. Oh, nice He's got super, yeah. And there's a super, very nice. Really, really nice kill confirmed there by Grant. That was really clean. I, I still can't get over that punish combo off, off the uh, Grand Viper yeah. in round one. I've never seen that combo before. That was sick. No, I have not. 5H, jump cancel, jump 2K. Yeah. That was pretty sick. Fairly convincing start there from Grant. See if he can keep the momentum going. Gets the bike the counter hit, forces the burst really early on there from Zero. But Zero gets his own counter hit. Yeah. Burst right, right back. back. So we're back to even. And you know, I like Grant. He was doing a uh, command grab right into Mappa. It's like what we were talking about on commentary during the auction about, you know, litmus tests and just seeing what they can do. You've got to be able to shake out of that. That is not guaranteed. So, and you don't want to get hit by that. Give up a lot of damage that way. Nice combo again for Grant using that instant jumping down kick for an interesting float setup. He gets a knockdown, and Grant already on match point. All or nothing. Uh, heavy catch there. Oh, nice counter hit. Didn't follow up with the gun flame quite fast enough. Yeah. You can't get a juggle off that if you cancel reasonably quick. Yeah, Soul gets a great deal of reward off a counter hit sweep, so. Here's that same combo again. That is pretty. And it took him all the way to the corner. That is a lot of damage off what looks like an inner, you know, a fairly innocent looking confirm. And Slayer does Slayer things. Your life bar is suddenly a lot smaller than when you started that combo. I'm seeing some desperation here from Zero. Not looking good. Gets crossed up. He has no burst here. Rock mix up, goes low into the command grab. And that was far. It. That yeah. command grab, I mean, I've seen that tick before, 2K into command grab, but it's still, every time, it just looks far. It doesn't it, look like you should be in range it has for the that, command grab. It has that same feel of getting Potemkin Bustard, where you actually see your character sprite shift a little bit. Yeah, and exactly. You, just, you go, well, yep, I, I got grab. So good job by Grant. Looking forward to maybe seeing that combo a little more later. Yeah, very stylish combos, very, very... Effective punishes. That's really important, especially in tournaments when you're playing against someone who's willing to to take the bigger risks, to throw the big hail marys. When, when you block them, when you stop them, you have to punish them for it. It does two things. Agree more. It gets you a big life lead most of the time, and two, it gets them to second guess themselves. Mm -hmm. And if they stop throwing the really risky stuff, now you get to take full control. You get to put the onus on them and maybe make them on their heels a little bit. Could not agree more. I talk about that all the time. It's ironic because I talk about it against Slayer a lot, how you got to be willing to take some risks, and when he takes a risk, you have to punish him to the to the full. Because if you can't discourage him, or if you can't take advantage when he loses taking a risk, yeah. what's to stop him? He's just going to run you over. Yeah. So A Slayer running wild is not fun if you're on the defensive end. You, you get in a 
very bad situation very quickly, and the most innocent mistake turns into, why did I lose 70%? So here we got Mr. You Suck versus Poch P. Mr. You Suck, Rockin' Sin, Poch P with the Dizzy. Yep. Poch P, I believe, is more well known as a Blaze Blue player, but uh, excited to see what he can do here in Guilty Gear. I know he dabbles a little bit, so. Excellent. Yeah, this matchup, I'm I'm kind of curious to see how this has changed because again, Dizzy's got some some new tools, little minor quality of life changes that have really made her entire game feel more solid all around. But again, as we mentioned earlier, Dizzy, a very low defensive and guts character, Sin notable for doing some of the most egregious damage in the game off various counter hits and confirms. So. Yeah, and Sin is also the kind of character that gets Dizzy's more yes. often than a lot of other characters Absolutely. because when he hits you, it, they tend to be counter hits. Yep. Stuff like counter hit beat driver into a full combo, stuff like that. Counter hit elk hunt into a full combo. Yep. And those are the kind of situations where if Dizzy gets hit with that, it could be like a throw or something innocu uh, innocuous after that yep. that just completely Dizzy's her. Right now, it's not over yet. Hockey taking very good advantage. Makes Sin poke into the fish. Takes round one, very nice. Alright, so Poch P, no slouch here. Let's see if Mr. Yusuk wants to try and adjust here. But right now, getting knocked down, gonna get put in the Dizzy mix up already. I love that mix up. That is a classic Dizzy mix up. Runs it back. Yep. Keep doing it. Oh, the fake! Yep. Poch P looking crisp right now. Mr. Yusuk got his burst back, but he's not gonna get a chance to use it. No. Oh, he did do the first bait, but wasn't enough to finish off. See if Mr. Yusuk can take advantage of this. He's got a long road right now. Yes, he does. The, the burst is basically only going to be a gold burst. And Poch with so much meter. Poch a little tentative here. He's yeah, there we go. And he catches him with the ice. Very nice. All right, yeah. so Poch P taking game one. So that, was, that was a really clean round. Those those initial mix-ups were crisp. Those instant air dash mix-ups are something you have to commit to going, you have to wake up a jump. You have to force her to be able to use her contingency plans for not keeping you on the ground. A lot of those setups are not truly, truly unjumpable. You want to make sure you want to hold the Disney player accountable. Otherwise, those are really difficult to block if you let her start getting over your big process, as we saw. Oh, that burst. Yeah, right that, was, that was looking like some great defense by Mr. Yusuk, but eventually he got opened up. Yeah. And now he's in a lot of trouble. Yeah. If he can't extend, you know, drag this round out, He's gonna go in the next round with like no burst. Yeah. And this one's looking over. This, yep. Yeah. Over. Pochby is absolutely cruising right now. Yeah, Mr. You suck it. Probably get his burst back, but it's gonna be really late in the round. Absolutely. Absolutely. He just needs some momentum. He needs a knockdown. He needs a really nice counter hit. He needs one of those big sin damage combos at the moment to kind of get himself settled, get into the flow of this match. Right now, Pochby is not letting out. There's that air dash crossover again. Hashmi is looking, his execution is looking really crisp. Yeah, Good decision making. He saw that uh, jump D from Mr. Yusuk was too high, did 5P when he landed. All right, here we go. There's counter hit, jumping dust. The immediate the burst. burst. Yep. I like that burst, actually. It's not a truly safe burst, but Sin has to commit to stopping that, so. All right, but here's the evolution. Mr. Yusuk blocking that ID mix up. I would not be surprised to see Hashmi go for the the fake cross up now, like we saw that one time with the bubble to stop her momentum. Nice back dash out of the down forward kick. Fades the burst. That's it. Hodge P takes it. Hodge P looking crisp. And Mr. Yusuf just never, never able to get any breathing room, any momentum in that matchup. And while Sin does have good defensive tools, it, it's risky to try and DP out against Dizzy. Because again, what we talked about, if you DP and it catches the fish or the minion, well, now you've got nothing. You're just sitting there. You've basically whipped a DP, and Dizzy's going to do whatever she wants. You're right back to the situation. So just kind of Sin is not what I would call a momentum character, but he does need enough room to hit you once and kind of start flustering you. And oh, yeah, Dizzy yeah. Dizzy just started the snowball down the hill, and there was no coming back. Yeah, he's definitely not a momentum character like other characters you might think of where they need a knockdown, and then they just start running the, the blender, but he still does get a lot of momentum off of hits. He does Absolutely. a lot of damage if he gets the right hit into, you know, one mix-up. That could be the end of the round, that kind of thing. So he, he definitely can, you know, take advantage of momentum, but... Yeah. Not like not like a character like Dizzy, who you get knocked down once, you might have just lost the round. Yeah, you didn't see Mr. Yusuk getting the space to do things like just do a TK air beat driver to kind of challenge any attempt to jump up and summon a bubble or summon an airfish. You know, right, that's the kind right. of thing. Just really 
disruptive to Dizzy in the usual game. And there was just no chance to, to go to it. Hotchby took his knockdowns and said, well, I'm in control. I'll just keep control from now till the end of these four rounds and happily move on. All right, so it looks like we got our next player sitting down. Ayumu H6 versus Megadan. Megadan rocking the Mikado shirt. I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> Yeah, shout out to the uh, Mikado. Oh, oh, H H G. Pardon us. H G, not H six. All right. May versus Answer. So this is a matchup I'm not too familiar with. Yeah, I can't say I've seen this one very often. <laughs> but Answer also kind of different in this version. Got a lot of buffs, a lot of, like you were saying before, with Dizzy quality of life. Yep. Buffs. Yep. A couple characters that are not shy about playing in the air. So you can see a lot of air contesting between the two. And I would venture a guess that May probably has a little bit better luck with the, the challenging of air normals, but Answer's a very air mobile character, especially if you can get his scroll set up. Yep. You beat me to it, that's exactly what I was gonna say. May was some of the best air to air normals in the game. Jump H, jump S, jump 2H. So it's definitely gonna be a little bit tougher answer, but if you can get some scroll set up, the scroll movement uh, attacks have very high priority and they're very fast. HG, I think, went for a hard first bait there. He went in and then backdash after a big counter hit from the Roman cancel and didn't get a reward for it. Actually gave up his entire momentum. So let's see if uh, Mega Dan can take advantage. Good block, gets the dust. Is he gonna burst? No, he's not. Didn't. Right. A little surprised to not see a burst safe uh, dust combo there. Could have done like a lot of jump P's after the, after the yeah. initial uh, jump age. Yep, absolutely, but nothing comes of it. HG takes round one. Let's see if Mega Dan can get a little bit of adjustment here. Nice pressure. Good defense, though. HG working his way out of the corner. <laughs> Accidentally rides the Dolphin back in. I don't think that's what he wanted. No, definitely not. There's that big jump S. Yep. All right, nice tick there. Get some knockdowns, see if he can do anything with it. Gets caught by the Dolphin, unfortunately. Yeah, and this is exactly what we were talking about. May basically here just, just throwing hitboxes around, letting Answer run into them. Yeah. Until he really gets some scrolls set up, you can't really contest this. No. May is, is infinitely more mobile than Answer is without scrolls. Once scrolls are on the screen, you kind of have a pretty even matchup in terms of what they're able to do and what their options are. But nice confirm there. Very like nice. Can get the full knockdown? Yes, he is. Whoa, that was interesting. Yeah. Good patience there by Mega Dan, but he is down to his last pixel of life. And there, jump S. with that jump S. Again, just May notorious for just sticking gigantic hitboxes out in the air that are difficult to contest for a lot of characters. It's funny, we were talking about Slayer Jump H before and how it's like a shadow of its former self, even though it's still really good. It's the same with May. Jump H still amazing this game, yeah. and it was so much worse than the older Absolutely. games. Like, you got counter hit by that thing, she could. She could go around the world to yeah, come back and hit you and yes, get a conversion. Alright. A little bit of patience here in the neutral game. All right. Not able to confirm much off that scroll. That's when that's when answer needs to shine. When he hits you off one of those scroll dashes, that's when he wants to do his biggest combo set up his good break ups and everything else. So unfortunately ends up back in the corner, not able to get a lot out of that. The beach ball, I like that setup a lot. Beach ball coming back, yeah. it's gonna cause your opponent to freeze. Throw a dust. Yeah, perfect time to do that. Oh, trying to beat the counter, I think, there. Just backed off. Yeah, there's there's that kind of stuff I'm talking about. The high priority scroll attacks. Okay. Nice a little bit of a problem. That's yeah. wow. Excellent confirm from HG here. Is this gonna be enough? Oh, it's okay. Yes, yeah. it is. Very nice. HG already on match point. That is a excellent confirm out of the corner. Yeah, nice combo choice. Mega Dan, gotta make some adjustments here. He's gotta get some momentum. Yeah, get some scrolls out. I like the patience here from HG though. Yep. And I like HG sitting in front of the scroll. Yeah. I mean, like, if you want to challenge and try to dash this, that's fine, but I'm going to be able to contest it. That's just really smart neutral game for good spatial awareness. Mega Dan bursting fairly early. I don't know if it was early enough that he'll get it back this round if things go bad, but he's giving himself the best chance to try to win this round right now. Nice dead angle there. That's a situation when Answer gets on top of you in that situation. You go into some pretty scary mix-ups, but the dead angle gets HG some space, gets him into the corner. Ooh, counter hit. Not even confirmed, though. Yeah, the Dolphins hit OTG. Lucky break there for Mega Dan. Another chance here. 
Nice, nice. anti-air. Very, very nice on this part. Not able to get the full confirm. Where's the mix-up? Very Whoa. nice. Very ambiguous. I think that was a cross-up. Yeah. Like it, not dead yet. Backs off. Sets the card out. Oh, a little bit too far for the illusion. About to get burst back, though. Yeah, watch out for the I like nice. it. Went for the counter. I like that play a lot. Unfortunately, May was not able to get it. Oh, the double clash. <laughs> crouching jabs. And HG takes it. Make it in starting to make some very nice adjustments there. Just kind of ran out of time. Took three, three round losses before he really started feeling uh Yeah, finally he was able out. to get some scroll set up, start to move around. Yep. An answer, the kind of character, when you hit, you have to get everything. Because he's the kind of character that thrives off, okay, I hit you off the scroll dash. I need to knock you down and set another set of scrolls and be on the scrolls. That is how Answer's mix-up gets very grimy. Right, you put the work in, you got the hit, you gotta you gotta get your reward. And it's to me it's not even so much about like damage or anything, it's just crucial, it's like venom. Just get the knockdown. Yep. If you're not sure about the conversion, just cut it short, forget the damage, just get the knockdown. That's Absolutely. the most important thing. And up next, we've got one of those killers we were talking about from these Z blocks, gonna have Marathon taking on Lost Soul. Yeah, so Lost Soul, definitely one of the uh, U.S. favorites to make it really far in this tournament, potentially win the tournament, you know? Yep. And uh, all year we've been seeing good showings from him. Yep. Justin uh, Justin Wong, with the uh, clutch sponsor. Shout out to Wong Nation, helping Lost Soul get to some of these events. Yeah, absolutely. Lost Soul, of course, notorious uh, when, when XR signed, the original version came out, just absolutely tore through tournaments with his l to the point where, where people were discussing is Elfeld beatable when Lost Soul is playing and, and, and there were a lot of tournaments where the answer was no, not really. Yeah, Lost Soul's been out in front since Elfeld was available as a yep, character. Absolutely. He's been in the forefront, been uh, one of the best Elfelds in the country, if not the best since the beginning. Yep. And it's going to show you why. Yeah. And the interesting thing is that one thing I really like about Elfeld is you can have three top quality Elfelds and none of them will play simple. Yeah. They all have their own styles and quirks. You'll see the same strong moves, strong offensive yeah, pressure yeah. and such, but in the neutral game, some really favor the rifle, some really favor yeah, sock yeah. and some just kind of like to dance around and use their normals. It's, it's a really interesting character in that mindset. Gonna let the intros rock here. Yeah. I've said before, I don't understand the intro. I, I didn't watch the story mode, so I feel like I'm missing something <laughs> that, with this intro. That would definitely make things... Yeah. And Elfeld already is a bit confusing in dialogue alone. Now you add in the story aspect. And yeah. We don't have nearly enough time to bring Chad up to speed on this. So. See, now this is an intro I can appreciate. Right. It's very clear. She's got a dolphin. She rides a dolphin in. And now we're ready to fight. All I get right. it. All right, so, so it looks like the names are swapped yeah, name. here, but Lost Soul, of course, repping that uh, black and white Elfel. Yep. ball. Very nice. Nice knockdown. This is one of those situations. Elfel's best anti-air, her close slash, has been toned down significantly since the start of Exert, and it's a character like May can take advantage of that if she can get on top of Elfel. Absolutely. I mean, that, that's just primarily one of May's game plans versus every character, is to throw off your anti-airs with tools like jump to uh, H to alter the timing, and moves like jump S, which hit really far below and can hit you earlier than you might expect. So a character with some kind of shaky anti-airs like Elfel can really struggle, but also making it look easy right now, not even giving Marathon the chance to really fly around the screen and try to use those jump normals. You see, you see the spacing on Lost Soul, just like a really basic, I'm going to meaty jump slash him. And just has to hold it. Gets in, very nice confirm here. Get yeah, the pull, get the pine berry. Nice lightweight up. combo. Yeah. And shotgun damage, which it hurts. Big surprise if someone shoots you in the face with a shotgun multiple times, you take a lot of damage. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard bad things about that. You shouldn't let that happen. No. And Lost Soul just tearing through this first game. Really, really strong throwing. This is just what Lost Soul does. He, he plays very smart spatial awareness. He picks his spots, but as soon as he gets a hit, he takes you to the corner and he's not going to let you leave. You're going yeah, to have to. You're going to have to defend against a hard to see mix-up. I, I was just gonna say that about. 
how uh, he's actually like innovated some combos for her also using that like bridle, exactly that kind of combo. Yeah. You don't really see other elf elves doing that. He spends a lot of time actually in training mode and he innovates a lot of stuff with her too. Yeah. I mean, these kind of set, I mean, everything is designed to just push back to the corner and get a knockdown so you can start the grenade mix up. It's so difficult to deal with. Yeah, this should be the end of this round, I think. I think so. I'm trying to do as much damage as possible. Yeah, Very nice. Enough. Just maximum damage off the firm. Into brown combos, if you're new to Guilty Gear, there's a mechanic called Guts. Your defense goes up the lower your life bar gets. So when you're trying to take off that last 20% of someone's health bar, it's like trying to do 50% at the beginning of the round for some characters. So you have to really know your optimized damage combos. Sometimes you have to do combos where you're going to sacrifice a knockdown just for the sake of ending the round, but you have to know those values. Yes, sir. Lost Soul with a little bit of a misstep during some of his pressure there. Missed the grenade throw, got knocked down, but he's back on top here in the other corner. Oh, he does drop a combo there. Got a lot of damage out of it. I like that. That's that elf elf buff. Jump D, YRC is so strong. Comes yeah. out so fast. Lost Soul takes that convincingly. Four rounds. Yeah, elf elf, I, I feel like that's not discussed enough how good jump DYRC is. It's a massive, almost, it feels like it's instant in how fast it comes out. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like a little bit offended that they gave her the ability to YRC that and it still comes <laughs> out because it's like, it is so good. It immediately, is. immediately after uh, Rev 2.1 came out, there's been a bunch of videos with mid-screen mix-ups where, mm -hmm. I, I forget the setup exactly, but you, you knock her away, you knock them away with a jump dust, yeah. and you pull a grenade, and then you high throw the grenade, and then like air dash, jump dust YRC, YRC. And the mix-up you get off that yeah, is what? you can like roll through them because the grenade comes down right on top of them. Yeah. So you can like roll through, you can fuzzy, you can do like all these things. It's really, it's really absurd. It's, it's a, YRC is a powerful mechanic. It has been since XR came out. But when you have moves like that that are gigantic, oppressive hitboxes, especially in the air because now you create all sorts of things. You can create fuzzy setups off it. You can create just very basic 50-50s of... Am I going to go low? Am I going to land and throw you off a tick? Is the grenade going to come in and wreak havoc on you? It's really, really smart use of meter for a character that doesn't need a ton of meter to be effective. Elf right. gets great knockdowns with very little meter investment, and that's why once her offense starts running, she's very terrifying. Yeah, and just, just being able to, if your mix-up doesn't work out in the corner and you get a grenade out, just being able to do like jump D, Y, or C to completely lock them down until the grenade goes off. Oh, absolutely. It's really, really powerful. Absolutely. So definitely a nice uh, new tool added to her arsenal there. So, yeah, so up next, we're gonna have Decline out of Omaha. Very, very strong Sin player. Um, a Sin player who gets, just when he hits you, it hurts. And everybody knows when Sin hits you, it hurts. But Decline has this, this penchant for Oh, that counter hit. Yeah, I'll take that 80%. Thank you. It's really, yeah, I'm, really I'm, I'm a big uh, Decline fanboy. I've, yeah. been, I've been praising him for a while now. I remember seeing him at, like, first tournament years ago. I think, actually, now that I think about it, it's coming back to me. I think it was Combo Breaker, the first Combo okay. Breaker. I met him and played a bunch of casuals, and he was still, you know, getting, mm -hmm. you know, getting used to the game and, and kind of st in the process of getting good. But I, I was like, I like the way you're playing, you know. Yep. And uh, he's he's an absolute beast now. He's beaten yeah, a he lot is. of players. I think uh, he beat me actually at uh, I think Frosty's maybe or something okay. like that. Yeah, recently. So yeah. yeah, he's he's gotten really good really quick. Yeah, very, and, very strong uh, player. And uh, Omaha, where I learned to play Guilty Gear all through the XX era. So um, I, I notice a little bit of the Omaha flair in his play style, which is is neat for me to see personally. So I'm a big fan of that. But. Yeah, I'm not, f uh, not familiar with Selfish. Curious to see who he plays. Um, it's always... Sin matchups can be not necessarily polarizing in terms of numbers, you know, 5-5-6-4, five, five, but polarizing in terms of how they're played. Yeah, play style. You know, mm -hmm. um, some matchups, Sin's very content to just own the mid-range, play, play, I have Beak Driver, I have Elk Hunt. That's it. That, that's the entire basis for what I need to do in this matchup. The ones right. that force him to diverge a little bit more are where they get really interesting. Looks like they had to restart the console here, yep. but shout out to modern, modern consoles and tournaments. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Sofish looks like he is from Canada. Yep. So good to see a lot of Canadians coming down yeah, for the seen tournament. Yeah, a lot, a lot of uh, Canadian representation already. Right of course, a ton of just international representation in general at an event this huge. But mm -hmm. it uh, 
it's really cool to see how this, this Midwest event has turned into one of the premier fighting game events worldwide, you know, not just not just here in America. Yeah, we saw Peppery Splash a little while ago. Yep. Big, yeah. very, very strong, strong Canadian player. I, yeah. I got the privilege of uh, commentating his run in top eight at Faust Games, where he went on a tear through that bracket, ultimately falling to Bears in Grand Finals. Buttons reset and everything. Is that Biken I see behind the it button? It does look like, like Biken. Biken uh, definitely got a lot of, uh, not, I'm not going to say major buffs, but a lot of small buffs that have added up into making her feel much more usable than the original iteration of Rev2. Rev2 she's good now. Yeah, she's, 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 good. Got a, she's got what she needs to compete. Uh, Rev2, she felt very lacking overall in just about every department. We'll see if uh, Sofish can put those two tools on display. Max range Tatami catches. Yeah, wow. wake up to Tommy, just no fear. And had the presence of mind to get the ID conversion off the counter hit the Tommy. Yeah, very nice. Uh, I'm seeing a little bit of questionable choices here from Sofish. All right, all right. He's doing a good job. The Tatamis are working out for him real well. Yeah. Some of the pokes are a little a little uh, off the mark, but the yeah, Tatamis are looking great. I don't see a little bit on that space. Too long for the combo hit, but I like it. Runs up, grabs. Actually grabbed it out of 2H, yeah, which that could have been real bad if it actually if hit. It, yeah. I like that presence of mind. You hit a combo, you know it's not going to continue, but they're in hit stun. They're not going to be apt to really be mashing out or anything. Good time to run up and finish off a two hit grab. Counter hit Elkhorn, a little bit of damage. Viking with some pretty bad defense, though, so she can't really afford to get hit too many times. Yeah, has very high guts rating. She can stave off some damage at the end of her life bar, but the beginning definitely hurts when she takes hits. Oh, rough burst there. Good to get a full turn. Yeah, this one's going to hurt. I think he's dead. He's going to get... Oh, he, he, he thought he was going to get meter for super. The second yeah. hit of the beat driver whiffed, and I think he would have got super from, the, from that if it had hit. Yep. At the very end there, we saw the first Azami attempt by Sofish. Azami feels like a tool that's going to be a little bit tougher to use against a character like Sin, because you, yep. you, the, the cancels into it are nice, but they don't reach peak or driver range, and that's a big problem. Yeah, but at the same time, I could see that being a big nuisance for Sin, because he Absolutely. wants to do things like beat driver elk hunt as like a block string to help him get in, that kind of thing, yeah. make, make you respect the low, but that kind of stuff is exactly what Viking's looking for with Azami. Yep. That's like, you know, her eyes light up when you start autopiloting those kind of strings. Yeah. So I could definitely see being a, a nuisance for Sin. It has to play a little bit of a slower game, slow it down a little bit, make sure he's not autopiloting any strings. Yeah, Azami is Viking's main mechanic. So it's a counter stance, basically. So when you hit her when she's in that stance, she has the option to cancel into various special moves or movement tools. And here we go into our first danger time. Oh, pools. Jump punch hits, but no conversion. A little bit of a ooh, there's scramble here. A, that's a nice counter hit. Goes for a burst bait. There's yeah. no burst there. Another counter hit. There's oh. the burst bait. <laughs> Very, if you first you don't succeed, burst bait again and gain your reward. All right, this should be some pretty good damage here. Full knockdowns are nice. Good awareness there, Sofish, knowing he's in eight. Had time to jump out, but gets pushed right back to the corner of the counter hit. Decline already on match point. And that's the kind of thing you see in a lot of Viking matchups. You know, Decline could have meted him there and prevented that jump out, but you're always thinking about a zombie in the back of your mind. Absolutely. So sometimes you gotta just just dash up and throw is just really strong against Viking in general. Yes. Viking is a character that will teach you and demand that you learn good tick throws and how to incorporate throws into your offensive game plan. Right, nice little conversion there off the counter hit. Uh, uh, Caesar. Okay, a bit of trade there. So much with a nice life lead, but again, a life lead against a character like Sin can be very, very Disappeared dangerous. Disappeared in an instant. There's the zombie, runs in. Nice YRC by Decline to bait it. I like it. Very, very good awareness of what Viking has available with that spacing. Oh, there the, dunk. the dunk. All right. Gets the knockdown. And Danger getting chipped out. Big combo opportunity here. Decline trying to run this one back. Going to have to eat. Yeah, had to cut that combo a little short, but gets another hit. Be careful how you burst. You that was a little scary. Yeah, that was scary, but it wasn't bit. Gets over the chug. There, that's going to be it. Takes it.
Sofish was starting to get some momentum there, but just not enough. Never really got a chance to do good Biken damage, which was definitely one of her bigger problems in the initial in the initial version. You know, her corner loops did solid damage, not what I would consider excellent damage. She has some cool combos now. Yeah, she does. With like the up Kabari and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, but you but but you have to you have to convert on them, and they're they're ones that require some some good awareness and some good spatial understanding of of all your little hits and confirms you can make. And, and in a matchup like that, where Sin is most his most casual combos are doing 30, 40 yeah, percent, yeah. you need to capitalize on every hit, or you're gonna fall behind. And that's kind of what we saw in that final round. Yeah. All right. So up next, looks like this is gonna be Fruit Punch versus Ulastre. Yeah, coolest Hopefully red. I'm reading that right. Yeah. Cool, is it coolest red or coolest, coolest red? Coolest red. Coolest cool, red. I'm coolest red. Yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe. But uh, yeah, another thing that we didn't see uh, from from uh, Sofish there, TK Yozansen. Yes. Let's talk about the fastest overhead in the game. Absolutely. Unreactable. Yep. N just straight up unreactable. Yep. It's like. 12 frames or something like yeah. that, 14 frames. Yeah, done at the bot at the minimum height. It's e it's incredibly fast and yeah, she can RC, get a really nice combo, you know, to Tommy and to up Kabari, yep. really nice damage. So and uh, and at the range you would use TKO TKO's on, so Mike has a lot of good loads. You're not you don't really want to be standing at those. Right. You know, crouching kick, crouching heavy, especially is a huge damage normal if it hits. Right, right, clean. right. So. Um, it's something you have to respect, and the, the, the big thing about TK Yozantin is that without meter, it's not terribly threatening, but it does get very, very annoying. Yes. It's, it's uh, If you play Tekken, it's a lot like eating safe, you know, or, or innocent looking loads in Tekken, where it's, well, that didn't really hurt. Well, after you eat six of them, you're like, right. okay. And, and you're like slowly getting pushed towards the corner, because <laughs> you, now you got to tech in the air somehow, yeah, and you got to exactly. like play that whole game. She has a really good air throw, so sometimes you tech yep. and you get air thrown, now it's a disaster. And then if you start, you know, getting antsy and jumping out, well, then you start facing things like, well, does she just jump back to Tommy? Does she actually call you out and throw you up the Bari chain and pull you back? You know, oh, there's a lot of scary situations there. Perfect. So it looks like uh, Poolstred is playing uh, Biken also. So maybe we can see some of this stuff All in right. this match. Excellent. Biken versus Soul again. Another set of legacy characters. Very classic matchup. This is a matchup that has gone back and forth in various versions of the game, but has usually come down to the fact that Soul just does so much damage to Biken when he catches her. The, the two main factors, I think, in this matchup are, number one is wild throw. Absolutely. We were talking about how good throws are in general Absolutely. against Biken. Wild throw, yep. really strong command grab. But the other thing that uh, is a little probably lesser known if you don't play the matchup is um, Soul's 2D is sweet. It's yes. ridiculously good in this matchup yep. because basically if, if you react to her doing a zombie, you can just cancel the 2D and it beats all of the follow-ups. Yep. Low profile Sakura, it stops Suzerain. Yep. Uh, it'll low profile the P counter, which I don't remember the name of. Um, so she really has to be careful of that. You gotta you gotta almost wait to counter until you see 2D. Yes. And then hopefully, you know, he cancels 2D into something which is and that's what you hit. Yep. So gotta be gotta be a little bit uh, cognizant of that. Yeah. And uh, that that that's really where the mind games start to come Absolutely. to play with this matchup. Yeah, as you mentioned, wild throws, Soul's command grab, and what I've often taught new players about Soul is when you're trying to figure out how to play offense with Soul, treat him like a grab, because it, it, what he is, his, his, the scariness of his mix-up and his pressure revolves around the fact that at any time, he can command grab. Yeah, until you show the threat of the command grab, it's really hard to open people up. They don't it really is. have anything to, to fear. It is. So I'm going in right now, catches. Oh, try to air grab the tech and yep. actually wind up hitting with the jump yep. H. And then backed off and air grabbed anyway, so. Oh, there's the Azami. Yeah. Oof. Wait it out. That's where you want to see that 2D right there. Yeah, I like the idea, though, going with the 6H, because yep. he was trying to hit the recovery of the Azami, Absolutely. which would have been huge damage. Yeah. Tough to time, but the reward for it would have been amazing. Waits on the Azami. Nice, nice confirm, conversion. Hey, nice burst bait. I like that a lot. Yeah, the first whiff and 2D Abare out for the round. Yep. Great awareness there. It's the end of the round. No life left. 
good space in first base because all you have to do is throw out a far slash. It's gonna end the round anyway. So, oh, the the uh, the alerts are going off in my head. She's very close to stun right now. Starting to round off yeah. with a counter hit back here. Counter hit 5K. Is, gotta be careful here. Yeah. I mean, she's pretty close to dead already. Yeah, but any move is gonna be a stun here, especially a counter hit. There's a run up regular grab. RC. Jump for the timing. Yep. There's, there's the, the stun. stun. Yeah. That's gonna do it. Brute Punch with a dominating game one. So if you're not familiar, what, what he did there is he did throw RC in the neutral jump. Yep. And the neutral jump is doing two things. One, it's just a timing thing, but you actually incur additional scaling if you hit somebody during uh, an RC freeze. So yep. the, the, the kind of the background lights go dim during an RC. Yep. If you hit someone during that time, you incur additional proration. Yeah. So that neutral jump is actually perfectly timed so that when you do the Fafnir, it hits right after that proration uh, period, and you get additional damage. You yep. get better damage on your Basically on your a combo. gigantic buffer input to guarantee you get the Fafnir out when you want it and, and how you want it. Right, I think, I think the kids call it a frame kill these days. Okay, that's a new one for me. <laughs> All right, so Cool Red switching over to Raven here. I guess the, the Viking not really yeah, cutting it here. Did not look comfortable in that matchup. Was yeah. struggling to find good five spots to his army, So I mean, like we said, that matchup is not great for Viking. So it's uh, you know, if you're not familiar with it, I, I don't disagree with the switch. Yeah, Raven, the kind of character that can actually you know, play at range against bad guys. First out of Grand Vipers, already down a burst. He's right? also just a, a more. Uh, just a, he's got a more aggressive game plan. You know, he's, he's, he's more proactive. Yes. Yeah, that's kind of a unique thing a character like Viking demands. You, you play a much more reactive, defensive style at AP because that's where her strengths lie. Right. And if you're not comfortable doing that in the matchup, you switch into a character like Raven that wants to force his offensive game. Could pay off but right now. Just the punch. The casual walk up 6P. Yep. Gets the counter hit, closes out the round. Yep. Souls forward punch, a great move in those situations to just kind of either delay in a Gatling or just throw up and throw out Rob because it means so many things on the ground. The reward for it is fantastic, especially in the corner. Caught him snoozing there with the air dash after the YRC, but yeah. free Did punch staying very uh, conservative there, just taking the hit. I actually wound up dropping the combo, so it worked out for him. Yeah, Kubus Dredd really needed a knockdown there. He gets some momentum going. See if he can steal it back here again. That's still in the corner. Nice run up grab. There we go. All right, a little bit of damage here. All right, double scratch. Black Leaf and still knocks down. Yeah, nice. Gets out of the corner, spends a little bit of meter, but that is well worth it to get out of that corner. Oh, okay, interrupts with the super. Here we go. Not much excitement meter going on. This isn't going to do a lot of damage, but it is going to get a knockdown. Yeah, not. it is a knockdown, but it's not a strong knockdown. No, unfortunately, a little too far from the corner. Okay. All right. That's how we're going to go into Dragon this, this could go really badly. I mean... Nice knockdown. Lewis Red has to be very careful. He's not want to get caught here. Soul should wake up. Not quite. There it is. Doesn't oh, quite doesn't get the kill. Finish him. All right. Catches him. I like the attempt by Fruit Punch. He had, had very little to lose there. He, yeah. was, he had a big life uh, deficit there. Dragon install a move that can, can put players into panic mode very quickly because of the impressive tools it has. But being an install, it has a limited amount of time. It's on Coolest Red there. Actually, I think he was going to run out a little bit before he did, but he managed to finish off the round anyway. I like this game plan here from Coolest Red. He's just running away, being annoying, throwing needles, yep. but finally got caught here. This is a lot of damage. Yeah. Got to try to block this mix up, too. Oh, Very didn't nice. hit confirm it. Oh. That's hit confirmable. Okay. Oh, went for a side swap. Not able to get to confirm. That's a big drop right there. That could have been a massive momentum change for Coolest Red. Instead, now he's back in the other corner facing down. One more combo, we'll probably finish this. It's caught. There it is. Oh, got his, it. Yeah, got his burst back. He tried to make a burst hit by doing jump yeah. H instead of jump D. But, uh, yeah, he actually didn't need to do that. I don't think he was going to get his burst back from that hit. But yeah. it's a really when, when the burst is that full and it's about to come back, it's really hard to tell exactly Absolutely. which hit it's going to come back on. So I don't blame him there. Yeah. But... Great job there by Fruit Punch. He's going to advance on. Our coolest Red just never able to really get. Got a little bit of momentum playing that kind of death by a thousand paper cuts there with Raven. You know, I'll hit you with a needle, maybe an innocent hit here and there. But when he did get a couple, like that blatant air dash from the top of the screen, that needed to be yeah. big, you know, full damage, knocked down into it's, the mix up. It's hard it to win that way, just like whittling somebody down. It's eventually they're going to catch you, and if. If it's a good player, you know, somebody like Fruit Punch who is competent and knows his combos and stuff like that, they're just going to completely, 
you know, yeah. reverse the situation, do way more damage than you've been doing with the, with the whittling. It's just not going to cut it. Yeah, so. it's, it's Guilty Gear is one of the hardest games, period, to play without maximum efficiency on your team. You need to make it hurt because for a lot of characters, Guilty Gear is, is a two or three touch game. You get the first one, you start to mix up. The second one puts them in danger of the round being over and then you finish the job. It's, so when you need seven, eight, ten openings to, to push it to the end yeah, of the round, yeah. that's, you're just not putting odds in your favor. I don't know that I would worry that you have to be optimal because especially given certain characters, the difference between optimal and yeah. reliable can be kind of yeah, drastic. Yeah. And by optimal, I more mean, you know, getting solid damage and, yeah, exactly. and keeping control. Just, just doing a good yep. combo that gets a knockdown. It doesn't have to be the best combo ever, but you gotta, you gotta do something that gets a knockdown. Yep. We're gonna go right in here. Zinzin he took second in our auction tournament today. Really, really good throughout that tournament. Yeah, taking on Rams of Food. I love the name. Yeah. Rams of Food. Looking pretty strong right now. I like the defense, but Zenzen one step ahead, holding her position in the corner here. Right. Now, Zenzen can just play the classic steady Kai we saw her playing earlier today. Ooh, the basic pressure is nice confirm there. Gonna happen. Yep, very nice. Nice conversion. Knew that was gonna be counter hit. That does give a conversion opportunity. I love it. I love the patience. Zenzen probably could have hit a button there. It was in a good position relative in the air to, to probably hit a button, but look at the life lead. Why would you take a risk against Slayer? Just yep. keep it so simple. Yep. Just good, steady play. And that's that's what Kai is all about. Kai is about just being good, smart, steady play, being safe. Kai, again, we talked about this earlier today, Kai doesn't have to take risks, especially not in a matchup like this, where he can control the ground space, where he can keep Slayer from being able to do candy steps and mix-ups. Right now, he's in control. Caught him with the frame trap, that was beautiful. Yeah. That's so tricky. If you notice, if you're a Kai player, and you notice that your opponent is high being 6H the second hit, you can really catch him with that by doing things like the split seal, which is what Zen, Zen just did, yep. or, or canceling the first hit into sweep, stuff like that. Yep. Nice. You see a big confirm from Ramp. There's a Slayer doing what Slayer does. Just out of range for that sweep to get the knockdown, though. There's the burst. Got one last opportunity. Okay, okay. Just needs one hit here. Nice patience. Blocks the block. punch. Mappa. Ooh, try to hit here. Nice burst. Gets away with it. If if Rams can win this round, um, not oh. quite enough. That that could have been great. That 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 uh, Zenzen burst there, but yeah. Just, just barely short on meter. If he would have had a little bit more to can, you know, do a Roman cancel, take that burst, but he had to commit. You know, this hit, if this hits, I win the round. There's the burst. Yeah. So good decision by Zenzen. Zen. Didn't want to, didn't want to risk going to a third round. Nice two P, two P. Great job of stopping Dandy. Yeah. Oh, and runs into the jump D. This could be good damage and a knockdown. I like the patience there, you know, the non-split shield uh, charge stun edge. Not quite as big a frame advantage. Wasn't sure if she was going to be able to follow up behind him to decide to play it safe. Again, there's no need for Kai to take big risks here. You have moves like, just like that. The far S completely dominates the air, the ground space the Slayer wants to use and utilize. It's essentially just doing the very, very smart basic decisions that make Kai feel like a wall in this matchup. Yeah, I mean, we talked about it earlier. I've talked about it before. Uh, Zen Zen just great decision. -making. Just all the right buttons at the right times. Yep. Using things like 2P to stop dashes. There's, yeah, a, there's right there, yeah. as I said it. 2P has punched him a clock, and it's not not about to punch out any time soon. It's yeah. just been doing so much in this matchup. Between 2P and Far Slash, Ramsey Hoof just could not get anything going. He's just running into normal the whole time. And a great confirm. Very that wasn't nice. even a chain, I don't think. I th no. I'm pretty sure that was close. Counter hit Close Slash linked into 2D. Yeah. Great conversion from Zen Zen. Yeah, she's very advanced on. Very nice performance there. Yeah, as uh, as someone who plays Heihun, every time I see Far Slash, I cringe. Yeah. Because that, that normal is a nightmare for someone like me. Because in that matchup, she gets to confirm into a down heavy, into a full damage combo, and I get to do the Heihun pose and just kind of go, hmm, yeah, that's a normal. Yep, <laughs> that's pretty good. You should, you should keep doing that. Right, right. All right, so we're going to take a quick break, guys. Uh, don't go anywhere. We got still a lot of pools coming up. Uh, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Hopefully you've been enjoying Combo Breaker 2018. You'd be enjoying it more if you were wearing an Astro Gaming headset. You can find more information on all of their products available over at astrogaming.com. For all you Aeris fans in the chat, make sure you harness your ATP Quanba by saving 20% off site-wide at QuanbaUSA.com using code CB2018. Even if you're not a fan, you can get great savings and awesome deals over at Quamba USA. Thanks for making room in your life for Combo Breaker 2018. You also always have room for a brand new lever. The Magenta, available over at Paradise Arcade Shop, has brand new technology and allows you to switch between four customizable modes at once on the exact same lever. If you're interested in something like that, head on over to the website and check it out now. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying all the amazing fighting game events this year, like Combo Breaker 2018. And if you want to attend one, you can save $10 on EVO registration with code EVOHEARTSCB. Right now, the offer ends 527, so get to it. Sign up over at evo.shoreyoucan.com slash register. For us to bring in Gaming Gen, you know, a professional company that specializes in, you know, logistics, equipment, that was the perfect partnership that we could have had. And without them, we could not have pulled off a three-day, 2,000-person tournament at all. We had more than enough equipment. We had people on site, not only to bring it in, set it up, but also to take care of it the entire weekend, make sure everything was updated and running perfectly, and then take it out at the end of the weekend. The Gaming Generations team is always there with ideas to make our events better. Branding is a big thing. I mean, when you have backdrops like this, when you have banners. People want to go to these events and have something to take home with them. They're already investing a lot of money to travel out to them, but when they can go and find little trinkets. Everybody's like in line at the booth because they want to get the shirt before the event. The apparel, it's so great that they can handle all of that. Gaming Gen is just such an essential part of every major tournament. I just don't know how anybody does it without a company like Gaming Generations coming through.
Welcome back. We are Combo Breaker 2018 going through the E Block pools for Guilty Gear XR Revelator 2. Hopefully, you've been enjoying this play. carrying you through the commentary. The fighting game scientist himself, Ryan Hunter. Yep, so we're about halfway through this second block of pools for today. There's going to be another two blocks tomorrow to round it out, but uh, still got plenty of action left. Had some notable players that I mentioned earlier. We still haven't seen them all, but we're about to see one right now. Our next match, we're going to see Marlin Pie. Not sure who his opponent is yet, but obviously Marlin Pie. Uh, oh, it's uh, that boy, Uchiha. Uchiha. Yep. So, um, but yeah, Marlin Pie, obviously very well known. Evo Top 8 yep. a couple years ago. Uh, Best auto in the business in the yep. U.S., really. I mean, what's more to say? He's been, been doing it a long, long time. Yeah, he's been playing Guilty Gear longer than pretty much anybody in the States, or as long as anybody in the yep. States since the beginning. So yep. he's a Guilty Gear legend. That's really all there is to it. Yep, all the way through the XX series. I remember I remember him coming out to Midwest tournaments, you know, back during the XX reload days. So, yeah, going to see uh, some... We've been waiting to see some top-level Zato play, and now, now is the time to watch. You'll get to see the textbook of how what Zato does and what makes him a scary character. Even, even though a lot of people feel he's weaker than he's ever been in Xard since this latest patch. But we'll, uh, yeah, we'll he's, see. He's definitely caught a few nerfs and yeah. hasn't really gotten much in return. You know, so there's been some changes to Great White and stuff like that, but it's not really a net nerf. It's just a change. Yep. So... Yeah, I think a lot of people agree that he's just dying like a slow death in Exer, yep. just, you know, kind of tucked behind the curtain, just, uh, and, 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 and I mean, can they really blame them? He kind of reigned for, you know, <laughs> 10 years. It gives Absolutely. somebody else a chance to be top tier, Absolutely. you know? And this matchup, Chip is a character who's given Zato a, a decent amount of problems throughout Exar's lifespan. So Chip himself, of course, on the end of a few nerfs in this latest patch, but still a very strong character. There you go. There's the hallmark of Zato, the damn thing. It's yeah. command grab. Zato at hard on offense, kind of like that guy, is a grappler. You have to you have to be afraid of what that command grab can do at all times because it sets up Zato's most terrifying aspects being his unblockables, which we're gonna see a setup for right now. Yep. Connects. Try to bait the burst. Yep. I, I think that backdash may have been unintentional. Yeah, definitely a first bait. I don't know if he was just wanting to hold that and kind of wait it out, or if he actually got the back dash. But right now, that boy Uchiha taking advantage of that first bait. I oh, like the wire seat does, burst. but he gets gold bursted. Counter hit does not go in his favor. Executor can just finish it. Yes, it will. Very yeah. nice awareness by Warren Buck. Yeah, great combo choice. Didn't want to. Didn't even want to give him the option to burst. He just wanted to clench the round. Go. And a bit, bit of an unfortunate for situation at the end of that last round for that boy Uchiha. He got the jumping heavy counter hit, but Noboru had already started, so he got counter hit back out. That's not a trade in Chip's favor. Yeah. Ooh, ID barely goes over. Uchiha capitalizes. See Arnold Pie being very patient. Finally gets caught trying to jump out and gets caught again. See what that boy Uchiha did. Nice air nice. grab. Here we go. Catches him on the mix up. Side swap back into the corner. Yeah, drop though. No yeah. ender. Again, those combos a lot harder for Chip to confirm in the corner to a full knockdown with the changes. Catch him with the counter hit. Jumping does. Gets the full combo. Very nice turnaround from that boy Uchiha. Yeah, it takes the round. Marlon Pie did build his burst back going into this round three. So he's got a big advantage there in the burst here. But yeah. there's that Gamma Blade trade. Catch him with the Nobu. Talk about unnecessary buffs. Yep. The needy drill. Jumps out. Very nice. I like that. Eddie coming in. That was a great presence of mind to jump away from that pressure. That pressure had a huge gap in it. Yep. You don't want to block Zato any more than you absolutely have to. If no. there's a gap, you want to get out of there. But you got to be sure because there are a lot of tiny gaps that you yep. can't actually jump out of. You yep. don't want to get hit out of your free jump. And I like this punish by Marlon Pye. Wants to do damn thing. The reason is that animation lasts a long time. Gives time for Eddie to come back off his cooldown from being hit. Goes in, takes it. Yep. And that's the kind of pressure I was just talking about. Just a lot of staggers with two Ps and the, the Eddie P move. Just has a lot of tiny gaps, give him the opportunity to hang himself. There's really nothing he could do there besides maybe blitz. Yep. Yeah, as you'll see through as this goes on, the most one of the most important aspects of playing Zato is micromanaging Eddie, where he is on the screen, how often he uses moves, managing the meter, and knowing when it's time to sacrifice little Eddie to let your opponent get in, but hit him instead of you, and then counter hit, and take right. full advantage, get damage off it. Very common tactic, absolutely. Yep. So the age teleports have kind of been a problem for Marlon Pike. He keeps going for air grabs when he, when he sees it, he's trying to react, but he keeps getting hit by Chip's jump H, which is yeah. like a pretty big hitbox. So 
He's got to work something out there to either react quicker or something, but right now it doesn't really matter because he's locking Uchiha down in the corner. Counter hits him out of Alpha Blade start up. Yeah. Alpha Blade takes out Eddie, but it doesn't matter. He gets hit by a random 5D. Yeah. Bit of a questionable burst with that much of a life deficit being stranded in the corner. I understand the frustration. We've all been there with Eddie bearing down on top of us. There's nowhere to go. If you just want to try and get a little space so you can actually take your turn. But right now, no burst to work with. And Marlon by already going in. He's going to get a full knockdown. Here comes another matchup. Yep. That was a burst save. Yeah. He all just, right. The DP save. Yeah. Excuse me. Just Chip's DP is good, not great. But DPs in general against Zato are... <laughs> The dead man's hand to close it out. Somewhere Julian is losing his mind. The okie doke. He did 5D from like half a screen Three. away. And it's yep. like, well, what is he doing? Yep. Before you realize, oh, he, he's yep. grabbing me with Eddie. Yep. Very, very Zato. nice. Uh, Wait, the, straight, straight. Nothing wrong with having an okie doke, especially with a character like Zato, who is really good at getting you to sit there and go, it's not my turn. It's not my turn. Don't push a button. Right. right. Wait, what's that big hand? Oh, uh, uh, no. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> he just he knew he just needed that one hit. Yep. Did whatever it took. And again, just textbook Sato play from Marlon Pai, doing everything that you're supposed to do, controlling. You know, most people think of Eddie, they think of the unblockables, they think of the, the, the grimy pressure and mix-ups, but Zato wins, like a lot of characters, he wins by controlling neutral, and he's very, very good at it. Noburu is just a literal wall of, no, this is my part of the screen, you right. don't get to come in here. Um, and you've had, you know... Ogawa, the best known Zato of all time, has actually explained that he treats playing Eddie in neutral like playing a Shoto. You know, it's, I have a dragon punch, I have fireballs on the ground with drill, and I just kind of let you slowly hang yourself. Then I'll take my damage. Then I'll take my offensive advantage. And you see, uh, That's interesting. I hadn't heard that, actually. Yeah, it's it's uh, an interesting way to look at it. It is. And, you know, and uh, again, we talked about Ogawa's kind of player, and you see Marlon Pai doing the same thing. Sometimes, let him let hit, hit Little Eddie because you're going to get a full combo. You're going to have all the time in the world for the, the Eddie Gage to come back. They're not down. They have a meaty drill on them. Well, that's that's your dream. You're, you're living Zato's best life right there. Right, right. All right, so we got Lost Soul up yet again versus uh, Quelion. Yep. Quelion, Quelion. So Lost Soul obviously dominated last time on stream, showing why he's known as one of the best, if not the best, Elfeld in the country. Early on, busting out the Bedman. This is a matchup I can't say I'm terribly familiar with. Don't see a lot of Bedman play in the U.S. Yeah, Bedman, like you, like you were just saying, underrepresented character. He caught probably the worst nerfs. I, I would I would be willing to say un, un uh, warranted nerfs. I would agree. In uh, the last couple patches, I would agree. and uh, he just really never recovered from that. Yeah, he's a character that uh, he still has tools. It's just they don't flow together like they used to. Right. It, it, right. It's almost like if you had a whole socket set, but then every three wrench it's just missing out of the drawer now, and that's kind of what Deadman feels like with the changes. Lusso trying to bait the burst there, but he didn't bait it long enough. The burst was a little delayed. So Quelion trying to fight back here, but cannot work his way out of this corner. Quelion showing some good patience, you know, trying to pick his spots for when to get out, but Bedman, unfortunately, arguably the worst defensive character in the game. Once you have him down, he just doesn't really have options to make you go away. Yeah, I was kind of half expecting to see him try to forward dash parry. You know, he's got that parry built into his forward dash. Yes. Out of that corner setup there, but it never came. I don't know if... Uh, Maybe just didn't think of it, or I don't know, maybe I'm missing something there. Yeah, and one of those situations, again, it just, you know, Batman's normals are designed to be used at, at max range. They're designed to catch you at, at places that other characters can catch you. But up close and personal, he just doesn't have fast enough buttons to really challenge gaps in pressure. And a character like Elko that doesn't have very many gaps to begin with, that's a real problem. Great conversion here by Lost Soul. This could be enough to take it. No, he's going to take the knockdown. Yep. Grenade bouncing away, so a little bit of an opportunity here for Quillian to get out of the corner. Trying to make something happen here. All right, catches it. Oh, but he doesn't cancel fast yeah. enough into the task. Unfortunate. Lost takes game one. Yeah, that is punishable on block, so he needed yep. to, I mean, maybe he missed uh, he's trying to sweep or something. The sweep didn't come out. That's usually, I think, what you see. Yeah. And you see that sometimes, I know I'm super guilty of this, when you've played an entire match under duress and you haven't really had a chance to run your offense in your game, you finally kind of get that opening and your hands and your brain kind of don't want to sync up and you just make a minor execution error. And that's all it takes, especially against a player like Lost Soul. 
Goyon gets lost right, on the corner right off the bat. See if he can get any of these Bedman mix-ups. He gets caught by the, the stand heavy, unfortunately. Yeah, 5H, bit of a nuisance in this matchup. Very much so. Bedman, obviously a very large character. So, you know. And he does have good movement options, but they're not fast, yes. especially. So, yeah. be a little bit of hard for him to maneuver away from some of those hitboxes. Yeah, Bedman has what could best be described as like an eight-way dash, but again, not not like a super fast Marvel style of way dash. It's more of a for combo extensions and basic mix up when he has the right kind of pressure. So I like this pressure. Here we go. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I like. I like this. A little bit of delay. Staggers. Making muscle. Think about it. catches him. Nice. It's all right. Forces the burst. Put yeah. him with a little bit of a life lead here. See what he can do with it. Those Task A Prime mix ups are, are my favorite. Yeah. Paul oh, lost soul with it, but lost soul still had his burst. So. Gonna be able to reverse the momentum here. Trying to, try to, to close it, it out. Not quite. Looking for the rifle. Yep. Gee. Very nice. Gee. YRC just a waste of time with yep. the unblockable load up there. Yeah. The rifle. Un the rifle becomes unblockable if you charge the the uh, aiming on top of the character long enough. But that's been nerfed over over the span of XR's lifetime. That's right. So, they delayed it a little bit. Yeah. So Lossal utilizing the YRC mechanic to basically stop time but keep the charge going faster, gets the unblock bubble, and now he's back in control. And it's just back in this corner again. Goyon trying to work his way out, but it's just so hard. Okay, there we go. A little tech jump E. All right, I like it, the empty jump. It's another knockdown here, so you can keep it going. Goes for the cross-up. Nice defense from Lost Soul right now. Being very patient, jumps out. Oh, 6P whipping there, giving Lost Soul an opportunity to get some momentum. Nice poke out. There, there's, you know, the one normal that, that Bedman can poke with a little bit, trying to interrupt pressure out in the neutral space. That's an available option for the corner, not so much. 5H actually hit going on, trying to hold this corner. He knows he needs to hold this to take this around. Yeah, tries the back dash, gets yeah. caught by the shotgun. Lost Soul yeah. takes it. And one thing I will say that we weren't seeing there from, from Quillion was throws. One of, one of the strongest tools that Bedman has, Absolutely. especially in the corner, you get a full conversion, but yep. he's got that really fast walk speed because he doesn't have the traditional dash yeah. that other characters have. So they balance that out by giving him a really, really fast walk speed, and it yep. makes for some really fast, hard to see tick throws. Yeah, it's an important, when you're walking Guilty Gear, you can throw at any time. You don't, you don't have to stop moving or anything. So when you have a character like that, that basically walks at the a speed of a very slow dash that's a dangerous game you know to have that tick throw option available but yeah i just didn't get to see it utilized and the real unfortunate thing quillion's in that the second round of that second game so close to kind of you know getting a little momentum getting around maybe getting the, the comments and stuff just wasn't able to get that very very last hit you kind of saw the beginning of that third round just just fell. Yeah, so it seems like we're starting to wind down in these pools. Uh, things are coming to a head here, starting to get some of uh, the notable players up against each other. Absolutely. Sitting down, we've got none other than the god, Doran 2K, yep. the jam god in the house. Flew out here to combo breaker, and his opponent is going to be Manny Blade. Yeah. Doran providing some of the most hype moments from Frosty Faust things that, uh, that got myself and Steve out of the chair a couple times during top eight. Doran notable for Really te just tearing through a bracket at times with his jam. Yeah, Dorn's been playing jam for about a decade now. Yep, been playing absolutely. since the old days. Staying, staying uh, faithful to his, his one true character. Yep. And it's finally paid off. She got buffed, and she's a real character now. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. If, ben I, if Bedman is missing tools out of the kit, Jam is the character who keeps getting new shiny ones put in the box. Yeah, and we, we already talked a little bit about Raven, how he got changed and nerfed a little bit, so it's probably going to be a little bit of an uphill battle here for Manny. Let's see what yeah, he can do. Yeah, I, I would venture a guess that this, I don't think it's a super skewed matchup, but I would I would lean towards Jam in terms of, of who would be more favored in this. Yeah, I mean, Raven does have that really, really strong 6P, so he should be able to slow her down from just advancing at will in the air, but it's going to be oh, the parry beautiful on the parry. Slash. Very nice. And Dorn just already with this corner position. Counter hit 6H. Blaze with no burst. Gonna have to get out of this yep. corner the honest way. It's just not happening right now. Yeah. Nice yep. block on the overhead. There we go. Yep. That's a chance to push out of the corner, and he does. Yep. Blaze is very patient there. He weathered the storm best he could. Now has a little space to work with. Does not get the command grab, though. Here's the catch. All right, let's see what Manny can do here. Oh, he missed the TK ball, I think. That instant jump H, I don't know what else that could have been. Oh, doesn't finish the side dust combo. That's a big drop. 
Whoa, yep. running the wrong way, okay. Yep. Dorn used those combos a few times across the foul things, trying to set up the, the max spacing on the puff ball to push to the corner. Right, right. The H puff ball does like more damage, right? Yeah, than, absolutely. Than the S version. Yep. Yes, it does. Dorn takes game one, or round one, pardon me. Uh, the quick burst from Blaze. I, I kind of like that, though, even though he hadn't really gotten hit yet. You yeah. just, just want to get out of the corner, and you'll build another burst back. He bursted so early that he'll get it back this round, even if he starts losing. Yeah. But look at this. Off of this burst, look at the momentum he's gotten now. Yeah, very nice. Going to get in the corner, especially early in the round. Raven doesn't have a great get off of the move when he doesn't have super. Look at this combo. I like it. Get some reset in the air grab. There's oh. that parry again. Yeah, it's very nice. damage. Yeah, yep. gets the card. Blaze kind of works way out of this corner. Whoa. Big nice. scramble here. The yep. burst gets blocked. The yep. 2P is burst safe. Nice wire Z, but Dorn's still getting the best if it gets the knockdown. Recards. Oh, trying to bait something there. I don't yeah, know. Blaze didn't sure. really have any resources. Maybe he was confused on the meter. Yeah, I'm not sure what was going there. I don't know what the hesitation was for. Yeah, very interesting. I don't know if just a pure execution mistake or, again, one of those situations where you read meter wrong, but that definitely cost Whoa, Dorn. Nice grab. Wow. Yeah, I think Dorn jumped into it there. Yeah, definitely. Blaze. There's a lot of momentum here. Big life lead in this yeah, third round. This is a problem for Dorn. Okay, nice jump out. There you see, that's the change in the, the Raven, you know, fireball game. Able to get out, but right now, Dorn under duress. Just short on meter from being able to RC to kill. Yep. But Dorn's got to be careful, yeah, the trade enough. I like the, I mean, beautiful slide under the needle and with any any amount of life to take the hit. That's a trade in Jam's favor massively, but unfortunately he just took too much that round. So Blaze takes game one. Yeah, a little bit of a slow start there for Blaze, but he woke up in a big way. Yeah. Great block. Blaze being very patient, knowing Raven doesn't have great options to get out. Finally has to take the hit and burst to get out of, out of the corner there. Yeah, he was being real patient until he got hit by that counter hit yep. 6H, and he knew he had to burst that. That could be a lot of damage. Yeah, no, after blocking that many moves, that was going to hurt a lot. Raven, a notably low defensive character, takes a damage very, very quickly, especially early in the life bar when Guts has a kicked in. Whoa, that puff ball hit weird. Yeah, it did. Taking it back towards the left corner, Doran, big light lead. Nice block. block. Oh, yep. Very Even nice. IBD is just blocking the IBD. Yeah. Going for the max damage. Not enough to kill. All right. Ooh, caught him snoozing. Yeah, this is going to give Blaze a chance to run it back in the corner and see what he could. Yep, there's a delay. If Blaze could just get Dorn to burst, he would be very happy. Absolutely. And he oh, does. He baits, he baits it. it. Oh, this is, this is a scary for Dorn here. Yeah. Nice dead, dead angle. Very, yeah. very smart on Dorn's part there. Still a lot of meter on both sides. And yeah, Blaze not going to die with oh. meter. I promise you that. Yeah. And Doran did not punish that Ooh. block. Circular is going to come back to haunt him. Too it far does. to OTG. Gets him with the frame trap. That jump 2K is so annoying. Yeah. Wow. Blaze Tug. looking really good right now. Poised to take this uh, round pretty quickly because Doran's so far from his burst, right. but he gets his own burst block. Exactly what Doran needed to turn this around. Yep. Let's see if Doran can steady the ship here. Looking real nice at the start of the second round. That was a big drop in that first round. He wants to run it back now. Nice Whoa, that cross up. Beautiful. That was, that was really clean. Yeah. That is uh <laughs> literally inside of his hurt box as he was waking up. That was extremely ambiguous. Yeah. I wouldn't have blocked. I'm not even gonna pretend <laughs> I was gonna block that set. So that was a great round by Dorn, but here's the bad news. He won so hard with the perfect that he got no burst back yeah. he just wasn't getting hit. Yeah, Blaze actually still with a slight burst lead going yeah. into this final round of game two. There's the oh, counter hit. hit. Big opportunity here. Yep. Gets the knockdown. Doesn't harm. Kind of don't know if there's a hesitation there or not, but Dorn with a massive life lead. But this is how it started last time. An innocent command grab turned into the snowball for Blaze in that first round. And that's exactly the character design. That's exactly what Raven is designed to do. He's designed to snowball with that excitement meter. He just wants to get a couple of hits, get the excitement meter up, he gets better combos. Oh, wow. The very end of Reagent hit? That was strange. Right, Dorn. I like that. Keeping a burst safe with yep. all the 2Ks. Didn't know exactly when he was going to get his burst back there. Yep. Whoa. Blaze offs the burst as soon as he gets it. But right now, Dorn with enough to take it. He does. Right, so Dorn ties it up. Blaze was on the verge of taking that one. Dorn yeah. turning it around, cleaning it up. Yeah, excellent poise by Dorn. That, that first round was a heartbreaker. You had a massive life lead. You had to cop up your burst. It got baited. And then managed to turn all the way around. So we're going to go to a final game between two very strong players in this pool. Wow, interesting conversion. I think he wanted a TK scratch there. I, I would guess so, but if the Black Beat combo knocks down, yeah, nobody he doesn't is not matter. complaining. I promise nope. you that. Nope. 
happily taken. I like this, just harassing with uh, with Far Slash, not letting Dorn advance on the ground. And again, you see, pretty much any time Blaze gets in a bad situation in the corner, he, he's looking to burst. He doesn't want to be there. He knows Raven doesn't have great escape options unless he wants to try and super out of a gap or something. And that's really risky. So nice. I like this very nice poke out. That was really good by Blaze. So he used the, the stance. Wow, the forward heavy goes over, crouching heavy from Raven. And Doran going to get to the corner. Gets pushed into the corner, though. I like it. Very Just nice. The air grab. Regions get out. All right, here we go. Caught him airborne with the 2 H. Nice, just jumps out, but Dorn not done yet. Wow, this lucky side swap there. Great conversion. Oh, Beautiful. Doran looking good right now. Now he's on match point. Turned it all the way around. Yeah. Getting the max bit. Wow, nice. Throws him out of the forward heavy. That was impressive. Nice poke nice out by Dorn. Yeah, Snips but, out the tick throw. But one too many two Ps pushed him out of range. Yep. Sweep and he gets caught jumping back in the corner. Oh, he missed the TK ball again. Yeah. Cannot afford that. Oh, I like it. He goes into the excitement stance to absorb the hit. The puff ball wire sees for a punish, but then gets caught again. Nice 6P, but he was so deep that the burst actually hit the command grab. Yep. Nice. Low. Quick, quick low. Blaze okay. trying to stave off, going down in the loser bracket here. Dorn on I, match point. I like this also. Dorn taking oh, his time. Works. Okay. Yeah, Dorn, Dorn had slowed down a little bit once they went back to neutral because Blaze had a lot of excitement built up. Yeah. So Dorn was trying to give that excitement an opportunity to die down. Yeah. yeah. Good awareness of the meter, just not able to get that, that big confirmed. Nice forward punch from Dorn. Good to get a knockdown here. Great combo taking him. Oh, not to the corner. Actually, yeah. actually side swapped. Hard to do with those double puff ball combos, especially in the neutral area, but right now, Doran taking full advantage. Yeah, first of nowhere in sight. That was a huge hit for, for Blaze to get out of the corner and actually push all the way to the other corner. Nice Dorn jump out. Yep. Jumps out, but couldn't get anything started. Gets attacked by the jump D. Still in trouble here. Jumps out of the dust, but gets air grabbed. All right, wake up. DP. Yep. Oh, gets hit by the down jumping kick. Here yep. we go. Counter hit, gave him the opportunity for a combo. Takes full oh, advantage. wow. Nice. Dorn does have burst back though. Oh, he tried to bait it. He does. Yes. Gets the grab. Is this gonna be enough? Not quite. Yep. Dorn with one life left. He gets the poke out. Where's the burst gonna come? The crossover it puts a gold burst. Jumps nice air grab RC, him. and that's gonna be it. Hits. Blaze gonna take it narrowly wow. over Doran. That gold burst at the end was clutch. Doran with the nice crisp execution again on that really, really fast cross up. But uh, can't cross up a goal burst. No, good, really, really good awareness by Blaze to kind of recognize that situation again and go, if I guess wrong, I, I, I'm in trouble. Because yes, that this is might the be scariest a, situation. Yeah, because jam at those ranges has a lot of burst safe combo options. If it's baited, you things that are done. naturally burst safe, like 2H, you just can't burst the first hit, stuff Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. So just. Just super, super good awareness to go, just gold burst. Just yep. hit the gold burst at worst, especially if he's going to go for something committal like an IED crossover or, or Dragon Punch. Jam's not going to recover in time to punish you for the gold burst. At worst, you're going to kind of have a scramble situation. You'll take that over trying to block that mix-up. All day, absolutely. So, so really, really good awareness by Blade. Just a great match. Really good adjustments on both sides. Very back and forth. What you expect from high-level Guilty Gear right there. Yeah, and speaking of high-level Guilty Gear, our next match looks to be no slouching either. We got yeah. Zen Zen back up to the plate against Fu. Ooh. Haven't seen Fu at all this weekend. Not even walking around anywhere. I knew he was here, saw so him in the this bracket. Is a, this is a matchup I am extremely familiar with from playing Hey Hunt. Um, it's not fun. It's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> you were talking about it a little yeah. bit before, just it's, that harassing it, far slash. It, it's not Hayhun's worst matchup, but it is a matchup where you just feel handcuffed consistently because a lot of Hayhun's unique tools get invalidated in this matchup. You know, he has Air Hayabusa, which ha gives him some very unique and interesting air mobility. And Kai just laughs because, all right, you want to fall down on me? Well, I have forward punch. I have stand slash. I have down heavy. Yeah. I have an uppercut. You know. I'll, whatever sounds good at that particular time of the anti-air buffet, I'll take a bite and then, you know, take my knockdown and move on. But the one thing he does have in this matchup is he out damages Kai by a very wide margin. Yes. Even with the, the minor changes uh, he Hun took in the patch, can't quite get as many triple red kick and, and big combos for full knockdowns, but it's still 
when you get hit by the big damage, it, it hurts. So the, the changes, it didn't make the kicks themselves any different, right? It's just if you go too many, you get too much scaling, you can't get a knockdown at the, the end, right? So you kind of yeah. have to limit yourself. The, the big change is to her jumping heavy. Her jumping right. heavy will no longer knock down from double jump height, so you have to cut things a little bit shorter. Right, right. So in this matchup, Zin Zin's going to be right at home. She's going to, Kai plays safe, no risk. So there you see, you're going to see that a lot. The forwards, there's a far slash into down forward heavy is a natural combo on Kayhun due to her giant hitbox. Really? I did not know that. Yes. Actually. And so, on on any forward or any far slash, Kai can do forward slash down heavy for each ever get full combos. Wow, I didn't know that. It's it's one of the biggest annoyances in this matchup. Sisifu just had to weather the storm. Finally has the dead angle to get out. Nice. Oh, Catches him with the shrink This is going to be big damage. Right. Forces the burst. Who will take that be a, after that It could be start? a little sketchy to burst that combo in that kind of spot, but pays off. Zenzen gets the good burst there. Yep. Gets him with the charge high boost. Let's see if we can do anything here. Yep, just backs up. Nice wire C up. He's going to get punished for that. Whiffs the Shinkin, though. He's going to get knocked down. Keeping it basically entirely burst safe until the stun dipper there. Nice poke out. Gayhun's crouching jab is up very fast, normal. And we'll get the full. Okay, I like it. Yeah, he's in the end bone. Oh, oh, catches oh. the counter. Oh, not able to get confirmed. That's a big drop. Yeah, that's definitely supposed to be ID, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. another opportunity. Now, this is what I'm talking about. That's not going to knock down anymore. That's the change that definitely hurts Yehun in a matchup like this. Yeah, yeah. punished. Yeah, I mean, that, that could have been all the difference, right? Yep. One knockdown there, a little bit of a mix-up. Yeah, that definitely. Maybe a throw to get a better mix-up. Yep, nope. And here we go. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Stand Slash does not have to be a counter hit for a full combo on Yehun. Pushes him all the way to the corner. Zin Zin feeling really good about the spacing got there. And you see Fu trying to jab out. Zin Zin not letting it happen. Yeah, Zin Zin doing a great job holding the corner. Uh, talked about that before. I love the, the one hit 6H into split seal. I feel like Kai's don't do that enough. Mix up their, their 6H uh, options. Nice poke out. Wow. Yeah. Fu did not confirm the, the sweep into the fireball. OP gets punished. This is going to do it. What he a confirm. The yep. Confirm the sweep straight into super to, yep. to prevent the burst. Yep. Beautiful play by Zen right Zen. I mean, that was looking just as bad as you made it sound like this it was going to be. This is just, this is replaying nightmares I have for many sessions online. Again, this, this, and nice. that's what you were talking about. That was non-counter hit. Yep. Fu gonna, unfortunately, not able to get the full confirm. I like Fu trying to go for max damage there. You want to utilize every confirm you get against Kai because your opportunities are going to be fleeting compared to Kai's. But again, it's so much harder to get those good knockdowns when you get those different those confirms now. So. And that's a big drop, and right now Fu is right back. No burst, back in the corner, minimal resources. Okay, nice sweep to get out. Oh, yeah. trying to bait a Dragon Punch or something? So that's an unfortunate situation that happens a lot. A lot of times, you poke with sweep because it's a good low poke, and you, then you do charge high boost and see if they'll sit. Because if you get in, you have frame advantage. What happens is sometimes the sweep hits, and you're already charging high boost, and you're kind of committed, so you have to do a scramble situation. Right, try to bait like a blitz or a reversal. Yep. And, and Fu did the best options available, unfortunately, Zen Zen. Again, just been playing solid all day, snuffs it out, and is already on match point. Zen Zen just looking so right, clean. there's a confirm. Gonna space it out, get the fireball. Text over the fireball, very nice from Zen Zen. Yeah, knew that wasn't real. Yeah, nice grab, run up, tick grab. Okay, nice back dash out, get a little, okay, here we go. Fu has to make this count. Yeah, this is a big hit. Nice Rust side swap, yeah. that was beautiful. Great. That is fantastic, now can you make this mix up? Nice block so far from Zen Zen. Pokes up, doesn't get out. Pokes him out of the dust. Yeah, I think maybe that was supposed to be 2D. Okay, nice. nice. Delays, doesn't get re-blitz, knocked down. Sets up the fireball. Here's that hand pressure. Did oh. he bait this? Yes, he, yes did. he did. And we're gonna get the clap super. Very nice turnaround from Fu. All right, so Fu not out yet. Looking like maybe he's getting a handle on the matchup a little bit. Yep. Big opening there. Yep. Forces the burst right off the bat. I like it. Yeah, that's a great burst, though, from Zen Zen. Even though that wasn't going to be too much more damage, just get the burst early so yep. you get it back later Ooh, in the round. That DP whips. Nice burst there by Fu. It doesn't hit, so he's not going to get burst back quickly, but he's out. Going to get a full red kick combo. Knockdown. Very nice. No, oh, a little too high. Doesn't quite knock down. I was going to say, because of the fireball and everything, there was a lot of hits at the beginning of that combo. Yeah, it's it's very much a height thing, and it's a real challenge to keep those low, especially on a character like Kai, who has kind of a slightly different air hitbox. Right, Fu got to work his way out of this corner. I like Spending the meter. Yep, very nice. All right. Nice confirm. This is going to be a lot of damage. It's a good starter. Missed the second red kick, though. Got a blue version. Nice but throw. I like it. The tick throw. Hadn't seen that yet. Kept it in the back pocket. Fu evens up 1-1. One, one. So some great adjustments here by Fu. Yep. Get, be, uh, capitalizing a little bit more on some opportunities that he was maybe missing out on in the first game. Yep. 
from Zen Zen, trying to ice the kicker here, going back to character select. Yep. And again, the, what you're seeing is, you know, Fu got those knockdowns, but he had to do blue fireball, Oki, as opposed to red fireball. And, and prior to the change, you know, you could adjust your spacing by doing, you know, a bunch of pun jump punches, a double jump, and, and get that exact good, juicy spacing. That's not an option anymore. If you want your knockdown, you have to take what you're given based on the spacing where your combo started. So, but Fu right now, I like it. Goes right back to that tick grab. I love that. Doesn't get the knockdown, unfortunately, but there you go. Good spacing. But ends up in the corner. Yeah. A little bit of unfortunate night. Beautiful. Wow. That was kind of risky because the 2H was definitely starting up. Yep. But no fear had the uh, bonus of the slowdown. Yep. It's one of those situations where, again, Aehun in the corner against Kai just lacking options. So forward heavy YRC is a chance to get out, does. But right now, back in, yep. Zen Zen push it back to the corner. I like not getting too greedy on that combo because the corner positioning was a little finicky there. Yep. Good awareness by Zinzin, the stun dipper out of that. A lot of Nihans like to do far slash after that fireball. There's not a lot of hit stun on the Boo fireball at all. So good awareness to stun dipper out. Love that decision there. Boo trying to make something happen with the fireball super. Zenzen immediately dashed forward and jumped into it so that she was blocking it in the air. That's exactly yep. what you want to do. You don't want to block it on the ground, give him an opportunity for a mix-up. And just like that, Zenzen is starting to come back here. Yep. I was wondering, I was about to say, is Fugan a dead angle? Does. Oh, catches him. Oh, out of range for the last hit. Nice Gets air grab. Throw. Back into the corner. Fugan getting his burst back. Oh, the Whoa, four the punch classes. R slash for Foo. So Fu with a burst advantage here up around. Zenzen's going to have to mount a little bit of a comeback here. Nice opening. Yep. There's another move from Kai that's a big nuisance in this matchup. And there's his the early burst. The sweep is really good at beating out a lot of Pihun's better pokes, especially at that rate. Oh, oh gets no. caught by the counter red kick. This is a lot of damage on a lot of stun, too. Yep. Got to be careful what she gets hit by next, if anything. Oh, gets caught by the down for the forward kick. Stunned very close right now. Yeah. This is really scary. Got to get out of this mix-up. Good patience by Zinzin. Get caught by the counter hit. Back in it. Pokes out. Finally, Zinzin had to do that. That was going to go either into a stun. Now has to burn her burst. Really nice by Fu. I beat the last hit of the HS uh, stun edge. Yep. Is able to barre out, but Zinzin not out yet. Still holding this corner position. This is big. Very big dead angle. No dead angle there. Gets caught. This might be enough. No, oh, no. Drops it. The air back in the corner, OTG, just yes, enough. enough. Wow. Seeing a lot of scramble situations in these rounds, which is pretty common when you have both characters down to no life. Nice. Oh, big early knockdown here for Fu. Oh, he went for the tick grab, but delayed just a little too long. It got thrown himself. Yeah, Zenzen was ready for it. Gets the knockdown. There's the burst. Yeah, I like that burst a lot. Fu is going to be in the corner. Yeah, I don't think he's going to get it back this round, no, though. So Zenzen going to knock down. She might be able to just ride it to victory. Here yeah, it is. It is. All right, Fu's going to have to play some honest defense here and find a way out. Pokes out, very nice. Instant block the stun edge. Fu is doing a great job of I being just the last hit. Drop those crouching kicks, which could have been a full confirm. That's a big drop right now. There's the forward punch. Fu has not tried to IAD in. And the first time he does, he gets knocked out of it back into the corner. A lot of meter on Zenzen's side. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of damage. Yep. Oh, oh, no, drop! drop. Oh, Huge the, drop. The, the double oh, shinken. Yep. Very nice. Oh, oh, oh goes into super. Counter. Gets that could have been the end of the round, but he went into super. Zenzen with a lot of meter spends the last of it, gets the air throw for it. Was it enough? Oh. It was. Gets the high. Wow. And clutches it out. Fu visibly a little disappointed. Who can blame on that? Was back and forth. The second time that Fu committed, we talked about that, you know, where he got the sweep and then charged Hayabusa, but the sweep actually hit. Mm -hmm. Same situation, that far slash was a counter hit. If you recognize that, you, you throw Hayabusa, he had enough meter, the Roman cancel, gonna go into to Shinken, which at that point is very, very dangerous first, even though Zinzin would have got it back. Probably could have ended the round, but he committed to the block into the pressure. That hit actually let Zinzin get out. Right, and, right, right. And it just shifted the entire. Yeah, I think, I think Fu is probably a little disappointed that he didn't just do something more simple, like, you know, far slash into uh, Hayabusa and maybe like RC that because yeah. like you were saying, Zenzen got hit by the by the far slash. That yeah. could have been it. So it, it's one of those and I totally understand at that range you kind of expect, okay, they're gonna they're not gonna be pushing buttons here. We're kind of at a, an even situation. Right. I'm just gonna take the opportunity to just get the super on screen, maintain mm. my offense here, because that yep. kinda would have been the end of the offense. If Zenzen had just blocked, yep. that basically would have been the end of the offense. Absolutely. So I, I, I totally hear you and I yeah. agree also. I, I understand the logic there, just wanna 
in a situation like that where you just need a little bit of damage, just spend your meter in a way that maintains your offense. Yep. A lot of characters would do like projectile YRC, that kind of thing. Yep. Hey, you can't really do that, so the Fireball Super is the next mm -hmm. closest thing. Unfortunately, just didn't work out. Yep, just what it, one of those things where you can't react to that. You know, you're not right. confirming in that situation. Right. You're, just, you're picking the best available route that you think is going to get you to continue the advantage. Because as we've seen, it's hard for him to get advantage in that matchup. You don't want to give it up, especially not at the end of round, end of the final game of the set situation. So really, really good matchup. You know, again, highlighting the strengths of both characters in that matchup. So next up, we've got uh, Marlon Pye coming back up to the setup. His opponent is going to be Kizzer Crate. Yep. So a lot of Kai right yeah, now we're absolutely. seeing. And this, uh, this matchup has slowly but surely been skewing more and more into Kai's favor throughout XR's lifespan. Again, Kai can just kind of play safe. He doesn't have to take a lot of risk. And Zato, when is knocked down, not really going to enjoy yeah, some of the dealing worst with, options yeah, in the game, not, hands down. Some does of the worst not options. really like dealing with uh, with those charge stun edge yeah, mix Slow ups. buttons, no real reversal. Yep. So, you're going to see a lot of, of attempting to win the neutral game because that's where this entire matchup comes down to it. Nice use of the grinder to get a, a quick stun edge. Nice, nice reflect. reflect. Yep. Yeah. That is a tool Zato definitely needs to utilize. And you see Kai throwing a lot of regular stun edges to try and control neutral. Yeah, you can't autopilot those. He does have a way to fight that. Nice defense from Kizzer. He does end up getting knocked down, but DP's out. It's not the counter. Nice. I like that. The close slash was either going to make Eddie block, or in this case, even better, kill the Eddie. And now, Kizzer Craig gets kind of set up back to the neutral game. Going to annoy Zato with these stun edges with the grinder. Oh, but there's a big knockdown. This, yep. this is what Marlon Pai was waiting for. Oh, I like that. that. That is a great, if you're going to burst is it against Zato, that is one of the best places you can do it, is to make the standing dust in the combo win. Whoa, actually, air dashed over him, made the burst. It's going to be enough. Yeah, it was a burst safe combo there. Uh, Marlon Pai just giving it up there at the end. Yeah. I, think that, uh, I think that air dash overthrew him off a little bit. Yeah, definitely. And something to note about Zato, you notice that combo did a healthy amount of damage despite guts. Well, that's a big thing about Zato. Zato does not have guts. So Zato is a character that actually takes a lot more damage than most do on the back half of his life bar. And a stun early on, Marlin. Going to push in the corner. I like this choice. Didn't really have the resources or the setup for a super juicy combo there, so just uses a blitz, forces him all the way to the corner. Yeah, importantly, also draining a little bit of burst meter. Yeah, that's, that's typically what you see once once people get a dizzy. I yep. think Marlon wanted to full charge it to get a combo, but yeah, uh, kids are probably mashing out. Yep, nice crossover. Okay. Great block. Yeah, good stand up, but then gets caught again. Like, there's that burst. It's the the standing dust. But this time, doesn't actually catch Zato. So yeah, if it's spaced well, it is burst safe. So yes. you have to be careful. But you're right, that is a good place to burst if they're close enough. You got to make yeah. sure they're close enough. Yep. When we talk about a good place to burst against Zato offense, the, it's kind of a misnomer. There are not really good places to burst against right. Zato in those situations. So standing dust is one of the few that can usually either net you a whiff or at least you know give you the tiniest bit of breathing room. Because again, you have the same problem that we've talked about. You know, little Eddie, Dizzy's fish minions burst work the same way normals do. They will they will hit the minion. But it doesn't count. It doesn't get you anything. All you've done is remove Eddie from the screen. Zato just comes up and punishes you for it. Yeah, Marlon Pai really holding this corner now. Here's a crate struggling, trying to get out, but he just can't make anything happen. Yep. And here comes the summon. All right, trade not doesn't really in Kizzer's favor. He hit Eddie and killed it, but got knocked down There's for the it. There's the burst. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And things are just going from bad to worse here. Kizzer finally getting out of the corner, but still locked down. He's going to get pushed all the way back to the other corner. Yep. And there's a command grab. Yep. Setting up the unblockable. The YRC to alter any kind of timing and attempt to reversal out. Yeah, or blitz. Yep, textbook play there for Marlon Pye. And he's on mark match point already. Yeah, so after a, a kind of back and forth slow first round in, in game one, it has just been the Marlon Pye show right yep. now. So quick rounds. All right. Here we go. This is what Kizzer needs to take advantage of. He has Marlon Pye down. Kai has great ability. There's that frame trap. Catches him. Big damage. Here we go. So a little scared that Stun Dipper wasn't going to connect properly because he was yeah. kind of close, but... All right. Kizzer with a nice bit of momentum here. See if he can close it out. Yep. Nice. nice bit. Here we go. Actually got Marlon Pye. What a burst combo there. off yeah. the reflected that Stun was, Edge. That was disgusting. Marlon Pye making it look nice right now, but oh, gets back into the corner. Kizzer Crate not out yet. He's still got the lead in this round. Yeah, he absolutely does. 
Wow. wow. Got caught. Mistimed the punish on it. Yeah, Shadow Gallery going right through the hitbox there. Oh. Oh, a little late. Yeah. And he's dead now. Yep. Opportunity for Kizzer Crate to move out of the corner, and he does. He crosses up. Yep, there's the reflect. Combo's into the knockdown, but Kizzer, no fear. Yep. Wake up. DP gets the round. Kizzer Crate on the board. Nice round start. Need him air to air with the jump team. Oh, right, well, the good. grinder. Oh, not able to get gets far slash instead of post slash. Yeah. Pretty dark combo. Still gets a knockdown. Has the advantage right now. Catches him on the jump out. These are doing a good job holding this position. That is killing him, though. Yeah. He's got to stop doing the stunnages at the end of his strings like that. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, it's a standard for a lot of high players. When they finally get pushed out, you know, it, it's kind of the natural born instinct. You want a stun edge, you know, at the very least. Put you a good spacing, let you kind of set up your anti and stuff. But against Zato, that's just a free fireball coming back in your face. Yeah, and the fact that he can there it is again. combo into a knockdown so consistently. Yeah. This is a, this is a problem. And, and right now, Marlon Flyer's reflex is just on point. It's what's carrying him okay. through this. Here we go. Result. Yep. Killed Eddie, got, gets the hit. Great defense, though, by Monpai. Blocks the delayed high. Jumps out of the stun dipper, waiting his turn, being very patient. Nice poke out with Crouching Slash. Yeah, and now we're in trouble. And and that's going to be it. Good. Very nice. Yep. Yeah, counter hit 2S, combos into the far drill, got Kyohei the, the crucial knockdown that he needed, able to get some pressure going, and uh, Kizer unfortunately got hit. Even if he had blocked, he was going to have to block multiple mix-ups in a row there, and he had really no life to work yeah. with, so it was going to be tough. So Marlon Pai takes it. Yeah, again, just good standard. You know, you saw Marlon Pai when he was under pressure, no no panic, no, no mashing, you know, no... no Zato doesn't have anything to push out of that. You just right. gotta wait your turn. And and that's one of the hardest things about learning to play Zato is a lot of people can learn the pressure and the mix-ups, you know, the Eddie, the Eddie combos, all that stuff. The problem is how well do you play when you're not the one pushing Eddie on somebody's face? Right. You have to sit there and take take the pressure, take the mix-up, and and that's something that, that in the past Kyohei was kind of considered lackluster on defense. Yeah, you know? he got ridiculed a lot in the yep. old days for maybe having some questionable defense, yeah, we'll put and, it that way. And that is gone now. It's I mean, come a long way. A, a lot of people probably have come to know uh, Marlon Pai from Marvel 3, and I absolutely. think that's really where he honed his defensive skills because the, the defensive demands in that game are so strict. Absolutely. And, absolutely. you know, coming from a, a good fundamental guilty gear background, able to come back to Exerd with that, uh, you know, built up defense from, from Marvel, and now he, he's got some, some of the best defense in the business. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so up next, Lost Soul gonna be taking on Decline. This is a, this is a fun matchup. Um, I played Sin off and on a little bit, definitely not to anywhere near the level of top players like Decline, but this is a matchup I always found kind of interesting. It just, it always felt like a slugfest. Um, both characters very capable of, of big damage confirms, and both can play up close and at far range with, with solid effectiveness, so. Yeah, both characters with a lot, of, a lot of different tools, a lot of different ways to play a lot of situations. Here's a perfect example. Sin definitely has a couple of options here to fight the shotgun pressure, but Lossel just smells the blood in the water. He's saying, I, I can tell you're just you're scared right now. I'm just gonna go into command grab. And this is gonna be some big damage. Oh, this it's not over yet. I never gets the overhead. What a combo here. Yeah. Might be enough. Why does he still have so much meter? He's gonna super at the end of this, yeah. yeah. Wow. It's just like just... never ending meter, man. <laughs> it, he, he, he did like Two supers. I think there was an RC in there yeah. somewhere. Like, it. Where's she hiding all that meter? I don't know. Just amazing confirming. Just what you expect from Lasso, but it's still awe inspiring to watch how he just gets everything out of every confirm. And look at this. Yep. Just uh, put him to the test. Do you know how to deal with shotgun peak? Yep. And so far, Decline not showing a willingness to stick out. Finally sticks out a low jab. Gets a little room there, but at this point, he's already down an 80% life loss. Yeah, you got to do something at some point. Trying to bait the burst there. Decline doesn't give it to him, but oh. he's running out of time to use it. Yeah. Unblockable. Yep, yeah, just too much going on there. I, at that point, I would really like to see Decline finally just go, you know what, I'm going to drag a punch. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw the Hawk Baker down. Prove to me you're willing to... to, to do strings that will bait it, that will stop me from doing this. It, you know, even if all oh, it doesn't get blocked, at least you can cancel into a, a beat driver in Elkhorn and, and get yourself a little bit of safety. But right now, this is just Lossel just running his offense and, and not really having to alter much. Yeah, Lossel with an interesting uh, mix-up option there. He's trying to bait a DP, didn't come, but he was still able to get a hit. 
Good block on the overhead. That's that's crucial. You got to be able to block that. Doesn't bait the super. Wow. And th those are the supers that get you the most, where you, you've been working so hard to get some momentum. It's your first yeah. knockdown, and Lost like, yeah, I wasn't done. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's still my turn. And, that, and that's just good game awareness right there, Ooh. going, all right. He's finally, he's finally got a little bit of breathing room. He's going to want to put the screws to me. Exactly. Let's just throw a wake-up super. Yeah. Like, you know. Also, he's up a game, so what's the worst that can happen? Yep. He needs a super, whatever. Yep. Up, you know. Yep. No, I like it, you know. You're you're basically reserved dominance this entire matchup. Why relent? Why why give him a chance to get the momentum going in his favor? Uh, Lasso opting not to go with the uh, unblockable tip there. Maybe scared of a wake-up super. Mm -hmm. Right, good right, defense. Defense. There we go. Deep with a little bit of pressure. Gonna get some stuff going here. All right, catches. There this we go. Baited that time. All right, I like it. Good and adjustment. Was, yeah, he was ready for the YRC too. This yep. is a big opportunity for Deep now because Muscle has no more meter. Oh, catches the very, very tip that Muscle able to get out. There's the burst. And that Lost is Soul it. Lost takes it. Lost Soul takes it. That. There's something about the very end of the flower flop hitting you in the feet that just. You just can't help but groan a little. It's demoralizing, yeah. absolutely. You're just like, come on. <laughs> All right, so unfortunately, that was our last match for the night, but it was a good one to go out on. Yeah. It's a great set of pools, great set of matches. And, um, yeah, we're going to have more Guilty Gear tomorrow morning. Like I said at the, be yep. at the beginning of this, there's two more pools. Uh, I think it starts, is it 10 a.m.? Yeah, so 10 a.m. Yeah, I'm, so I'm lucky enough to be getting up early for that because i got to play. So uh, There you go. So, yeah, so look out for those tomorrow. Those will be yep. streamed as well. Plenty more Guilty Gear action to come this weekend. Again, we're here at Combo Breaker 2018. So happy to be here. The tournament's just getting started. Yeah, this is day one of three. We, we are just kicking off right now. So we have two full days of, of Guilty Gear left and a ton of other games still to come. Stay tuned to... All the streamers, and shout-outs to all these guys. Thank you, Team Spooky, for everything you do, and all the guys working hard to bring you all these great streams from Combo Breaker. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, have a good night, guys. It was a pleasure to commentate these for you, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Take care.